Uh, I certainly think that the uh, you know the practice of being in the in the classical theatre, you're en endlessly doing uh, plays that have been done again and again, and that's partly why they're so universal because they can be rediscovered. And I felt with a classic fairy tale that the same was was true. And when it came to me, the script came to me from Disney. Uh, it was very, very emotional. That's how I felt about it. It was a very emotional read. I was surprised by how emotional and how deep it seemed to go. Because it still carried all the fun of pumpkins being transformed and, you know, mice turning into horses and, uh, you know, the great sort of ch chase from the palace when the clock strikes midnight. Um, but it felt there was a 21st century girl to be found in this tale that could otherwise deliver the fun and, and the heart. Yeah, well, we were blessed because we had uh, the, the multi-Oscar winning uh, Dante Ferretti being the production designer and Sandy Powell being the uh, also multi-Academy Award winning uh, costume designer and Harris Zambalukos, a cinematographer I've worked with several times. And between us all, uh, there was this determination to really immerse the audience in a visual spectacular and that by the time we got to go to the ball particularly that the film's scale and colour and, um, uh, and, and variety would expand almost exponentially to sort of meet the demands of the story so much as to do with this uh, determination through the first part of the, the movie to, um, uh, to escape and eventually to, to get to the ball. Um, so. Uh, there was a lot of conversation between all of us. The idea was definitely to make it, it grand, but not too, um, not too flamboyant, not too pantomimic, uh, but uh, to feel really rich textures and be inspired by the kinds of ways that dances were photographed in, say, Gone with the Wind or The Leopard, okay. um, and, and to really embrace that sort of big picture style. We shot on anamorphic lenses, so we were real, real widescreen, and. Um, uh, and and uh, with a determination to, to really, you know, take the audience with us. What happens is that the whole of the, uh, the, the, the uh, probably the eight weeks leading up to it, where we were shooting, was sort of structurally a bit like where the, the ball happens in the movie. So we were shooting relatively in chronological order. So every day there was an attempt to work out, well, how do we start? How do you bite this off? There are all the logistical things of when you're putting people in that many corsets and, and that source of um, those sort of outfits. It, I mean, often they were coming in in the wee small hours of the morning to get started in these big, you know, hangers where there would be rows and rows of hair and makeup and costume. And so there was a sort of military side to that, you know, quite an issue about when they all go to the loo and, you know, when, you know, when they have their lunch, when they can come back and when's the best time to do the most vigorous dance. And then in the middle of that, of course, we have our principal actors. They were all in this sequence, um, particularly, obviously, the prince and Cinderella. And, um, you know, the music and the dancing had to be prepared for that. So there was really months and months and months of getting ready to go to the ball, which again meant that the scene itself was charged with um, uh, that kind of excitement. When we were shooting it, in the middle day probably of a, of a week that we shot there was one of the most exhilarating I've ever spent on a film set. All the dances were done. It seemed like everybody uh, in the British film industry was there in some way, either hanging over a balcony lo lo looking at it or, or, or literally working on it. And you sense that that excitement that we, we were feeling as, as we just spent 12 hours dancing um, with cameras and with people, that if we could pass on some of that excitement, you know, and some of the splendor of it and the glamour of it and the fun of it, that, that maybe we would, we would indeed be able to take the, the cinema audience to the ball too. Mm. I think festivals are very, very lively. Dublin's very lively anyway. Dublin's, Dublin's a, in my experience anyway, is a very lively uh, audience in the theatre. I've always found them to be phenomenally quick, very quick-witted, very sharp, sharp, sharp uh, audience. So uh, humour in, uh, in Dublin, at least in my experience, people are on to like a rat up a drain. So uh, uh, if there's a laugh to be had, it'll be found in this town, and I hope there are. Um, and I think the festivals, uh, film festivals particularly, I think really do bring out this sense that there is discovery and curiosity amongst the people watching the movies. I feel this myself when I go to film festivals. I really like discovering hidden gems or I like the, the sort of excitement when you find a big film that everybody likes. Um, and uh, there's, a, there's a, just a sense of also the, the world passing through as well for this particular event, and they pass through Dublin anyway. But, but um, so that, that sense of uh, celebration is strong. It's a great way to open a movie.